Greetings, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Hello from one of my least favorite places on the planet, Southern California. Um, this week I find myself in uh, San Diego for work. I really hate Southern California. Southern California is the most bizarre place. It's basically mega population centers in an area that um, the local environment can't possibly hope to cope with that population density and these are people that have the nerve to tell the rest of the world how like the rest of the United States how they should live environmentally so you know one day once back in the day the Colorado once actually made it to the Pacific Ocean and it just doesn't happen anymore because the people of California just killed it <laughs> they, they kill it <laughs> And of course, I'm right next to um, an ongoing ecological disaster known as the Salton Sea. Uh, nobody in San Diego seems to give a shit. They will when it finally dries out and um, massive toxic dust clouds get thrown towards San Diego's way on a daily basis. I just, I, I really don't like Southern California. Like, I've been here for a week and it's just been cold and damp and miserable, which is, you know, for somebody like me who's got a lot of injuries and stuff, cold, damp weather is just awful. And it's always like this when I'm here. Like, people always imagine, like, Southern California has the best weather, and it's like, it really doesn't. Like, San Francisco, always cold and wet. Always cold and wet. Like, it doesn't rain, it's just, it's always just cold and damp and wet, so... It's overcast. It, I haven't seen the sun since I've been here. If I didn't know any better, I'd say I was in Detroit in the springtime, as opposed to sunny South San Diego. Um, and it's just like dealing with Southern California people. They're some of the worst fucking human beings on the planet. It's unreal how people here are just like okay with the homeless crisis amongst themselves. They just step right over them, you know, like. <laughs> I don't know, it's just crazy, because in Appalachia, as a community, we come together to, like, I don't know, not tolerate <laughs> large swaths of people living in our public parks and shit, but, you know, what do I know? I'm not a um, Californian liberal, so I, I don't know how, how to be a good person, I guess, because, you know, I'm somewhat conservative about certain things. But I do want to give a heartfelt congratulations to Patrick who has finally gotten back his picture. Turned out my last video, which was nothing but shit posting, that my shit posting wasn't worth anything. Now, I firmly believe, like anyone that shit posts, I am an expert in all things, especially things that I have no knowledge of and I'm stupid. So naturally, I thought I was right. And I still believe I was right. No, I was just shit posting. But congratulations, Patrick. I will say this. I swear to God, I hope and I pray he did not actually make these things from um, from shipping uh, from um, pallets. Like Patrick, on the off chance that you see this, don't use those chairs. Don't use those chairs. Don't use those chairs. You are going like if you and your wife are sitting in those chairs and those chemicals from like you, there's no way that you're you're going to be able to effectively seal in those chemicals pallets are incredibly toxic they're meant to be toxic uh, that's just so that they don't allow pests to you know burrow their way into them and then you know become invasive species and all you really you really should not repurpose pallets i don't know if this is real though because to be frank this actually looks like patrick knew what he was doing and like I don't know. I have a hard time believing that he was able to do any of this. He might have been able to get somebody on Fiverr or something to do it for him. Because um, I've seen Patrick try to do simple things like holster a firearm in his I'm super badass video kind of thing. And I don't think he has very good hand-eye coordination and stuff. So him using like power tools... I don't know. I've seen him talk and all. I have a hard time believing that Nikki is okay with him using power tools. Because I think he would get hurt. But congratulations, Patrick. Um, um, I guess he's he's hot posted about all things. Um, I, I I've, I've been so out of things. I've been very very busy with work and um, I've been on my feet a lot, so my back and my hip have been bothering me, and so I'm kind of behind on everything. Fascist trash, 
Joshua Boone, owner of Kiwi Farms, now saying Kiwi. So I don't know what the Kiwi Farms is, but the fact that Patrick refers to uh, it, or I guess this Joshua Boone guy, as fascist tra trash, I'm going to naturally assume that the guy's not a fascist in any way, shape, or form at all. But simply because I don't think Patrick quite understands what the term fascist means. Um, just generally, like to me, fascism, left wing, right wing, all that shit has is no longer means anything, it, it, especially on social media among Americans. People are fucking like Patrick. Patrick doesn't have political views. His political views are whatever is convenient to him. Patrick, okay, for the love of God, you do not go to a gym. I refuse to believe that Patrick goes to a gym, not on a regular basis. Like, he must go to one of the, what was that purple gym where they have, like, pizza days and stuff? Where it's not really a gym. It's more just like a fat person's social club where they, they kind of lie to themselves saying that they're getting into shape. Like, Patrick, you don't go to a fucking gym. You don't go to a gym. And, and frankly, Patrick, you couldn't tackle and strangle anyone for 15 minutes. You couldn't do any physical activity for 15 minutes. Like, come on, dude. Dude, your greatest nemesis right now is not the trolls. It's a flight of stairs. Like, come on. Also, I have to point out the fact that there is no way that this subway guy, this ex-marine or whatever, is going to be successfully prosecuted. You will not be able to find a jury of 12 New Yorkers who have never been terrorized by some idiot crackhead on the subway. There's no point in even charging him. This is just bullshit. You're never going to be able to get a fucking conviction. It's, a, it's going to be a rehash of the Kyle Rittenhouse thing where they overcharged Kyle Rittenhouse and then people like Patrick were up in arms because they couldn't understand why Kyle Rittenhouse was found guilt or not guilty of murder. It's like, well, because a first-year law student would tell you that he's not guilty of fucking murder. It was stupid to overcharge him. Speaking of which, the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, I have been on a kick of late on my phone listening to this really stupid podcast, The Radicalized Pod. And in their second episode, they were trying to come to terms with the Kyle Rittenhouse ruling. So this, this, this podcast consists of three people. You've got... Um, this bet dangerous um she's i guess in southern california so she's right up my alley the kind of person that i i just don't like like a soulless person who's all about platitudes and nothing of substance you know oh i care about the homeless but i don't i don't do anything to help the homeless in my area like like it's the kind of person that's like i'm a good person i vote democrat um, she's part of the podcast. It was pretty funny. In one part in the podcast stream, the second episode, she starts gnashing her teeth because it's just like we could have had Hillary Clinton, and if Hillary Clinton was elected, we would have, you know, we would have done something about the environment because she's a mother, and we wouldn't be involved in these wars because wars because you know something 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 that doesn't make any sense. And it's like, lady, she was the Secretary of State under Obama when we decided for the first time in our country's history that the State Department, the executive branch, was allowed to assassinate American citizens. No trial. No trial whatsoever. Like, our State Department reserves the right to fire a hellfire missile at you and your family. Human rights be damned. That happened under President Obama, under and, and Hillary Clinton had to authorize that order. Now, I'm sure if you brought this up to this woman, she'd probably say something like, well, that's different, you know, she was following orders. And it's like, okay, you're literally trying to use the flawed argument that, like, the Nazis used at Nuremberg. And I'm not saying, like, the guy that they killed wasn't potentially a really bad dude. What I'm saying is it, it creates a horrible fucking, um, a horrible fucking um, precedence. And it's something that I guarantee you if a Republican, like, say Donald Trump, who's Republican in name only, if he authorized something like that, you'd be up in arms and shit. So anyway, she's an old boomer. Um, and then there's another old boomer, this guy here, who does not look like this at all. He must have went to one of those glamour shot people and been like, I want to look like Ron Perlman. 
and then they were like, okay, we're going to have to use all the filters. He doesn't actually look like this. And then we have Jim Stewartson. And Jim Stewartson, again, he doesn't really look like this per se. Um, it's very interesting. If you, if you start watching the second episode that they did and then watch the latest episode, either Jim has had a stroke that has drastically declined his ability, like he killed the speech control portion of his brain. So like now he slurs and stuff. Or he's just 24-7 fucked up on drugs. I think he's probably 24-7 fucked up on drugs. Jim Stewart is like a wannabe cult leader. And his theories all include around Michael Flynn. Like everything is part of Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn is behind every, every stupid little thing there is. Like he's behind Russia, the war in Ukraine, Donald Trump, Michael Flynn's adult children no longer willing to have anything to do with him. All, all of that is tied into a universal theory that Michael Flynn is a quasi-Jewish neo-Nazi. It's, it's one of those crackpot theories that if you, you just try to understand it, it you, get, you get a headache from it. And so like anybody that's ever looked into him, like a journalist, um, this Jim Stewart guy has gone on to keep attacking the dude. Like, for example, he thinks Vice News is a right-wing hate site. Because one of the writers for Vice News looked into this guy's allegations that he constantly makes about Mike Flynn and basically said there's no evidence of this. Like his theories are crackpot. And furthermore, this guy started this GoFundMe thing to deprogram QAnon supporters. And that money just went where it just disappeared. And like a bunch of people are wondering what happened in the money. And that was enough for this dude to like... He, he attacks this author all the time. There's another author he really hates, Mike Rothschild, who is a, um, uh, an author that's written extensively on QAnon. And I've actually enjoyed his, his writings on QAnon, mainly because he humanizes a lot of the people that got sucked into QAnon, which I kind of appreciate. You know, he doesn't go with the whole, oh, they're all fucking retarded, stupid boomers. They deserve it to be ripped off and stuff. Like, he, he tries to explain how these people fall for this. Why they do it? A lot of times it's because they're socially isolated from friends and family. Bad things that happen to them, they're kind of just grasping on like hope, you know, that they think it's kind of assert control over their lives and so on. Um, well, that guy Jim Stewartson hates, absolutely hates. Like it, Jim Stewartson will even like start using like some really anti-Semitic language and stuff, and like that guy Mike Rothschild's even called him out about it. Like, hey, you know, you're like you're. You know, you're basically using anti-Semitic tropes at me. And then, you know, Jim Stewart does that stupid thing where it's like, well, no, no, I, I can't be anti-Semitic. I'm half Jewish, which, Jim, there's no such thing as being half Jewish. Just just FYI, there, there isn't. <laughs> there's just no such thing. What is interesting, though, is like, like you can kind of almost look at it where Jim Stewartson is like the cult leader. He's supposed to be the charismatic cult leader, but it's more like... Um, uh, L. Ron Hubbard, long after the drugs and alcohol and stuff had mushed his mind. And then this high lo-fi guy, he's supposed to be like kind of the enforcer dude. Let me see if he's posted it recently. He's got this thing where if anybody makes the mistake of asking any one of these three, like, could you please explain to me your stupid conspiracy? Like, like I don't understand what you guys are talking about. What they'll do a lot of times is they'll post this picture, and it's it's just a picture of a whiteboard where one of them is just filled it up with like crazy rantings. Now, of course, now that I'm looking at it, I'm not going to see it. I swear, though, like it, it literally, it's not this, but it kind of looks, it's like something like that. Wait, is that the high lo-fi guy? No. No, it's not the high lo-fi guy. The high lo-fi guy that looks like an old old nutter like that. Of course, it never fails. The one time I, I want to see his his uh... yeah, I don't understand what these people are like. This is like they're these this whole weird subgroup of people where they make these bizarro charts that are supposed to mean something. And they see this massive global conspiracy, like, involving Mike Pence and Russia and all this shit. Um, 
to justify why Hillary Clinton didn't get elected, as opposed to just, I don't know, acknowledging that Hillary Clinton was hugely unpopular among both Democrats, Republicans, and mo like non-aligned politically Americans. Like, like, do these people actually think Hillary Clinton is like a likable person? Like, I, that's what I don't understand. Like, these, these, these weird little little thing that I've fallen into. And the only reason that I kind of discovered these people is they kept retweeting and showing up in Patrick's Twitter feed where they're like, they're encouraging Patrick to just keep, um, to just keep doing the same stupid thing that he has been doing, which is engaging trolls and shit nonstop. Non now, of course, just like Jackie's saying, the reason that these people were doing that is they, they want to direct people into their GoFundMe and to fund their stupid podcast and no one fucking watches. Um, what is funny, too, is this lo-fi guy and uh, Jim Sturtzen, like every other episode of their podcast, it seems like they're ranting and raving that the trolls have once again got their Twitter account suspended. And it's like, well, no, normal people are reporting your Twitter account because you keep threatening to kill people. <laughs> like... like like your your Twitter accounts wouldn't get suspended if you stopped doing like very basic account like terms of service violations, you nutty boomers. Like, I just don't understand like people creating a conspiracy theory and stuff to like defend Hillary Clinton, where it's like Hillary Clinton somehow knows more people that have committed suicide than I do, and I served six years in the military, served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I work with homeless veterans through the VA. Like, how does she know more people that have committed suicide than me? It seems like every single person that has ever pissed off Hillary Clinton dies of suicide. It's, it's, it must be heartbreaking. It's like, oh, look, the Johnsons let their dog shit in my front yard. And then the Johnsons are found, you know, savagely beaten, duct taped up, put in the trunk of their car. Then they shot themselves, each other in the head three times, you know, in the back of their heads. And then their car rolled down into a, um, the local water reservoir. And it's like, everyone's like, wow, were they murdered? No, the FBI were already there. And like, as soon as somebody found the body, the FBI showed up and they're like, yeah, this is, this is clearly suicide. <laughs> It's like, I don't understand simping for Hillary Clinton. Like, I, I understand Bernie bros. I understand um, Ron Paul fans and shit like that. I understand getting compassionate about, or getting passionate about those people. I even understand getting passionate about Trump because at least he has charisma. There's nothing of substance behind Trump, but at least he has char charisma. Whereas, like, Hillary Clinton is basically all the negatives of Bill Clinton with none of the positives. Yeah, this is what I was looking for. Like, they always have these, like, these bizarro whiteboards that he fills out. And, like, like they, they basically expect, like, normal people to see those whiteboards and be like, Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. Uh, I don't even want to try to figure this out. The peace trees in one perfect call. Ukraine shakedown. Remove sanctions. Like... Cyber war to hot war. I like how is somebody supposed to look at this and go, okay, I understand what you're trying to say. Because it's just these are also people that like are now fucking experts on the Ukrainian Russian war, yet they couldn't find it on the map two weeks ago. Yeah. So anyway, this has been, yeah, this, this, these are the three. This is what the threes look like. So this is Jim Stewartson. And again, if, if you hear him talk, his voice is slurred the whole time. All three of these people are doing large amounts of drugs. Now they'll say in their podcast that they only do, and they'll say in their Twitter as well, is that they only do like medical marijuana and stuff. I hear the same shit all the time from the homeless vets that I'm trying to help out where it's always... I, I just do a little bud on the weekends. I was like, dude, I can see the track marks in your neck because you can't find veins anymore in your arms and in your legs. Stop lying to me. And it's the same thing with these two. Like, and again, this is a guy that's supposed to look like Ron Perlman, you know? It's like, <laughs> these are people that are like horribly upset. And if you notice, it's like they get no Twitter interaction, whatever. Like Patrick goes viral more often than these people. 
This is one of the subsystems of cybernetics. Okay, as an engineer, I gotta look at this. Cybernetics and you are the product. So he's saying it. I don't think he understands what cyber. Okay, his definition of cybernetics is just stupid. But it doesn't make any sense. I don't think he understands what cybernetics as a term means. <laughs> Optimization for who? This is so stupid. Like, <laughs> what, do, what am I supposed to take from this? Like, this is... I don't know if these people ever went to college. These people remind me of those folks that, like... They, they took like a year of community college, dropped out, and they were like like psychology members, or uh, majors. And now all of a sudden they think they understand how the world works. Uh, so I apologize, guys, if I'm not enough, uh, um, pronouncing my words and stuff. I'm so freaking tired. Um, and also, I don't have my head, my um, hearing aids charged up all the way. So um, I don't, I'm not hearing my voice very well. But... These people are just so bizarre. The Jim Stewart guy, too, is like, he will, he will flip out on someone. It's all, he, he quote tweets himself because nobody else interacts with him. Based on the thread above, this draft is called How Flim Controlled Opposition to Smears Enemies in Order to Protect the People Responsible for Fascist Insurgency We All See Around Us. Oh, by the way, the funny thing is Jim Stewartson is getting sued by Michael Flynn for harassment, stalking, and slander, I guess. And um, the Jim Stewartson guy has been saying, like, oh, this lawsuit is bullshit. It's like, yeah, they, they, they're they not even serving me with papers, so you know it's bullshit. Well, the guy that's trying to serve him, basically, in open court, went to the court and said, I can't serve this guy because he doesn't leave his house because he's unemployed. Like one, because of the guy, person trying to serve you can't just sit in front of your house all day long for weeks on end. So because Jim doesn't have a job and he's he's probably on disability, so it's great. My taxes get to pay this guy trying to scam people into believing in his current conspiracy theories. So Mike Rothschild, that's a journalist who has basically sinned in such a way that he has said that... Um, Jim Stewartson is full of shit with his claims. Frederick Brennan, I know him as the guy, what was it, um, Wonder Wheels or something? He's the guy that made A-Chan who's like, got brittle bone disease and he's tried to distance himself. I know he's tried to distance himself completely from all this. So is he trying to say that Frederick Brennan created Gamergate? Is that what he's trying to do here? Jared Holt, in the ADL, yeah, that's the other thing. He hates the ADL because the ADL has even looked into his claims and basically said, yeah, Jim Stewartson's a crackpot. So anyway, like, Jim Stewartson is actively being sued. Like, whenever they actually do, like, Jim should stop spending money on drugs right now. He should try to get sober, and he should also try to, I don't know... Save his money up for a retainer for a lawyer because I think what he's trying to do now is like hide under his bed while talking big on Twitter and hoping that it magically goes away. But um, it's not. And if he doesn't respond to this this action, he could get like just a judgment made against him. Now, I don't think Michael Flynn will get anything out of Jim Stewartson, mainly because there's nothing to Jim Stewartson's. I, I don't think Jim Stewartson's worth anything. Again, I think he has one or more adult kids. I, I imagine that they have nothing to do with Jim. Jim Stewartson and like these other two people are the kind of people that like. I could just imagine if I was Jim Stewartson's like brother, it'd be like, "Hey, Jim, I really appreciate you coming out to Dad's funeral. I know you didn't get along with him all the time, but appreciate being here because you know Mom's in a bad way. We need to be here for Mom." And it'd be like. I could just see Jim going. Did you see what conservatives are saying about AOC? on Twitter. And it's like, Jim, I need you to focus for me. We're here for mom. We're here for mom. They're just fashion. You gotta bash the fashion. It's like, please don't do this. It's like, what are you a fashion? And it's like, 
All right, Jim, this is why you weren't invited to my wedding. <laughs> but, like, these are the people that, like, Patrick is kind of surrounding himself around. Like, these are all, like, I don't know. Like, the, these radicalized podcast people, I really think they're trying to scam people into, you know, of course they got a Patreon. They always have a Patreon. It's just like that Jackie Singh chick. She's got a Patreon or whatever, and she also has a website that she wants people to pay for access to and all. It's all kind of scammers on top of scammers on top of scanners. It's it's always like that, um, and I really don't like. I really don't get how like it's like these people should be finishing up their careers. They should be looking forward to retirement. They should be kind of like the patriarchs of their families, and they're not. They're absolutely not. What they are is they're very angry, pissed off, drug addled podcasters <laughs> like i don't get it it's like i don't get people that think they're going to become influencers in their 50s like i i know i'll never be an influencer i i just don't there's a lot of things i will never be i'll never be a basketball player even though i'm really tall never i never had the skill set for it never had the desire i'll never be a ballerina uh i'll never be a high school math teacher there's a lot of things that i'll never be but one of the big things i'll never be is i'll never be an internet influencer and why i'm running into all these people my age like these three knuckleheads and all of a sudden like i'm gonna be an influencer like, it's like patrick patrick wants to be an internet influencer and I, I like i think that's the entire reason why he can't let go of social media wrong twice more stalker joy prison you are mentally ill stalker joy prison um that looks like this couldn't Okay, it's a Tesla thing, so he's up for, like, he really hates Tesla, of course. Anybody can look at his account and see that. He hates Elon Musk. Enjoy prison. Prison, these guys, you are these guys. Enjoy prison. Prison, prison, prison. Men reveal the four words they love hearing during sex. This is the way. I don't even want to know the situation where Patrick would, how would that, this is the way? I, I'm guessing this is supposed to be a joke, but I, I just don't, maybe, maybe I'm not big brained. I don't know. I, I really, God, this is so dumb. I, I, I know I shouldn't care that much, but like on the off chance that people see this, like please, 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 please don't use pallets for this. This is like using asbestos tiles or like lead pewter to like, like making a, a this is like making a fork out of lead pewter. It's like, why would you do that? Why on earth would you do that? Don't do that. That's stupid. <laughs> More presents. They're in line, not a V. Oh, wait. Is this a car one? <laughs> More Mustangs for me. Patrick, you can't afford the Mustang you got now. Look, shut the fuck. You are going to buy another car. You already have that judgment against you that you're paying off, but you're going to buy another car? Come on. Before it never existed. I don't even see who he, he's arguing with. He's got so many people blocked and shit. What I love, too, is, like, I've, I've seen this. This Curly Bill guy, Patrick has blocked. And he will unblock and comment to this guy. It is so fucking bizarre that he does that. Like, I don't understand why he takes the time to write this out. I, and I know. I've, I've said this in videos before. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I I still like the people that do this, where they make such an e like Pat. I saw a tweet from Pat where he's talking about like this. This right here, this right here is the future of AI. This is why we need to clamp down on AI now, because this is going to happen to you. It's like no, Patrick. Most people are smart enough not to take a picture like this and then post it on social media. Where anyone, anyone can easily Photoshop whatever they want here. Like, 
And again, this is a prime example where he's got this guy blocked. He's got him blocked. And Patrick will, has to be sure to re reply. <laughs> happened to other lefties. Well, that's the thing. That's the other thing too that really bugs me. Patrick is not left wing. Patrick is not conservative. Patrick is nothing. Patrick has. I'm sorry, but hedonistic is not a political views. And I, I, Patrick believes in anything that he wants at that moment. <laughs> he's a hedonist. He's not a conservative. He's not a liberal. He's not a lefty. That's, I digress. Sorry, you brought what, what I don't even want to know. It wasn't really... Huh? Okay. I guess he doesn't like a perfect circle. I, I don't know. The average person does not, does not notice the compromised audio quality between Bluetooth and having a phone jack. That's just fucking stupid. Also, the average person can't fucking handle not breaking this port. God, he tweets out a lot of things about prison stalk, stalking. Prisoner, child, child, prison stalker. Pull it in prison, stalker, and child. Like... He has all these things. It's just over and over and over again. Old Star Wars doesn't look woke today because the civil rights battles have fought were... They, there are whole episodes of old Star Trek that you would not be allowed to make today. You just fucking wouldn't be allowed to make. It's just like there's old episodes of... Um, Sesame Street, Sesame Street that cannot possibly be shown today. Like the whole concept of loving yourself and accepting yourself, you're not allowed to have that in a kid's show or an adult show like Star Trek. You're just not. But I digress. I've been rambling long enough. I apologize for my usual, it's not organizing. I'm just tired. I, my back is killing me so much that I've just kind of been relaxing in bed. I don't feel like going out into San Diego and spending a hundred dollars for a meal that should arguably only cost me like thirty. Fuck, it's, everything here is so fucking expensive. It'd be one thing if like the quality of the food and all was like you know at least decent. That's one of the things I hate about Southern California. You walk around here and there's like nothing unique from L.A. Like food-wise, there's nothing unique from L.A. Sacramento, fucking, um, I know Sacramento is not in fucking Southern California, I just picked another California city, but like, San Diego, um, Ontario, like, these are all the same city, like, there's nothing unique food-wise here, because everyone here is a transplant, nobody here is local, like, no one's born here, because the people that are born here get priced out and they have to leave, <laughs> but they can just get sick of it, like, I don't know why anybody would live here. It's like everything's so expensive. Cost of housing is a nightmare. The traffic situation is unreal. The air quality sucks, and the school system is hot garbage. Like, oh my God, we got better school systems in Appalachia. How's that fucking possible? I'm talking about public schools too. But anyway, I'll let y'all go. Ciao.